Hello, welcome. It has been a while since I conducted the comparison test between Play and PCSX2. Currently, I don't intend to redo these tests as it's evident that, Play is not yet ready for that. For those who are not familiar, Play is a PlayStation 2 emulator that emerged when PCSX2 was still in version 1.4, and many people were still facing issues with it. If you love staying up to date with all the latest news about the emulation world, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to receive new videos every week. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Currently, I consider Play a project that's rapidly evolving. With limited development time, it already supports two APIs, Vulkan and OpenGL, and the resolution scaling works very well. However, there are still many things to be implemented, such as controller vibration support. Regarding the compatibility list, it's quite impressive, with over 38% of games from the vast PlayStation 2 library classified as playable. I conducted tests on some games using different APIs, and I'll share my observations with you. Let's analyze the progress of the APIs, both OpenGL and Vulkan still have some stuttering issues, which are likely due to shader compilation. I'm not sure if this emulator works with shaders, but I noticed that every time I perform a new action, it causes a small stutter. I chose to test the APIs in the game Champions Return to Arms, an exclusive action RPG for the PlayStation 2, produced with the Snow Blind engine, which has good physics but is difficult to emulate, facing slowdown issues even in PCSX2, where it only became playable recently. As you can see, even in a small and completely static environment, there's a difference between OpenGL and Vulkan. Let's discuss them. First, the performance, most of the games shown in this video were tested on both APIs, and what I can say is that Vulkan has better performance, but there are other considerations to be made. The Vulkan API doesn't follow the game's resolution scaling, so even if you scale it to play in 1080p, the Vulkan API simply ignores that setting and runs in a native resolution. The second problem with the Vulkan API in this emulator is that the game becomes interlaced, so when using the Vulkan API, know that, although the performance is better in many cases, no filter is applied, and you'll be playing as if you were on the original PlayStation 2 hardware. Moreover, many effects, like transparencies and smoke, don't render well in the Vulkan API. On the other hand, using OpenGL, the resolution scaling works well for an emulator in an early state, but there can also be many graphical issues, as seen in the following games. Additionally, in many moments, the performance with OpenGL may be insufficient to keep the game stable. Now that you know about the APIs, let's briefly talk about the 2D games that are compatible with the emulator. Most of them are fighting games, as the PlayStation 2 has some great fighting titles. However, if you want to play your fighting games on this emulator, be aware that even when running at 100% speed, the emulator presents low quality when using Vulkan, and when using OpenGL, some elements are broken, such as character shadows and other transparencies. Another interesting thing I thought about is, if Vulkan has problems with interlaced games, what would happen if I selected a game with progressive scan? Would the flickering issue with graphics elements be resolved? The answer is no. Even when using progressive scan along with the Vulkan API, the games still appear as if they were interlaced. The conclusion I draw from this test is that either they haven't implemented basic features like progressive scan yet, or the API ignores any filtering. In the tests with Tekken 5 using OpenGL, the game runs slow and again with broken transparencies, showing vertical stripes, a problem that has been recently fixed in PCSX2. However, the game works in progressive mode, but some objects still flicker on the screen. It seems to be an issue with the filter for deinterlacing games, and as we know, PCSX2 works with various modes to do this, which seems to be quite complex to implement in an emulator. Castlevania Curse of Darkness is also in a very good stage of emulation, both in Vulkan and OpenGL, presenting only minor issues like shadows and lighting, nothing that will drastically affect your gameplay. The emulator shows impressive performance, being able to run even advanced console titles, like Final Fantasy XII. Despite minor issues with lighting, the game is rendered correctly and runs at normal speed. Even complex real-time effects are rendered correctly, with only a slight stutter when executing the move for the first time. On the other hand, Devil May Cry 3 was one of the most problematic games I tested. Several graphical elements are missing, the screen is not fully filled, and the graphic quality leaves much to be desired.
I also tested Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 3, the classic from the PlayStation 2, and it's no surprise that the game runs very well, with only a few minor issues in cell shading, like blown out outlines and some odd transparency effects. Continuing with anime games, Naruto Ultimate Ninja 3, like Dragon Ball, looks very beautiful but has some shadow problems. However, it runs at normal speed and without issues with cell shading effects. Unfortunately, the experience with Onimusha Dawn of Dreams was not satisfactory. Running the game in OpenGL makes it slow, and using Vulkan is mandatory. However, the results are still below expectations, with unstable gameplay, audio problems, frequent stutters, and objects trembling on the screen. Lastly, it's important to mention that almost all of Koei's music games are playable on this emulator, and I chose to test Warriors Orochi 2 due to the large number of enemies on the screen simultaneously. The result was satisfying, the game had minor slowdowns, but everything was rendered correctly, and the visual outcome was good for what the emulator has to offer. I wonder how this emulator will be when it has an automatic configuration database and widescreen patches, just like PCSX2 currently has. It could become a strong competitor or even surpass PCSX2. Of course, some basic functions are still missing, such as controller vibration and emulation of other peripherals like guitars. However, its performance is quite promising, leaving the CPU and GPU practically idle, even while playing at 3x resolution scaling, which is equivalent to 1080p. Have you heard of Play before? Will you give this emulator a try? If you have a low-performance PC or encounter issues running PCSX2, I believe it's worth testing Play. I hope the video was helpful for you all. Until next time.